Spirit. Now you must follow the move of the Spirit. You must follow the leading of the Holy Ghost and the leading of the Lord as He's leading you to the people that are prepared for the reception of the gospel. Now the Lord uh, sent this angel and the angel of the Lord told Philip, he said, arise and go. Now listen to me. Many times believers have difficulty knowing the leading of the Lord. Now they are waiting behind and they're saying, well, I know the Lord has spoken to me, but I'm still waiting for more. Listen to me. You'll never get the, what you are waiting for until you act on what God has already told you. You know when we were in school, we studied science, and we studied mathematics, and we studied um, other subjects, literature, many, many things we studied. But now, when it came to mathematics, particularly in geometry, you know, they'll teach us theorem one, and our teachers will do something. And after teaching us theorem one, they'll give us problems, practical problems, to make use of theorem one. After we did all those practical assignments, they taught us theorem 2. Then they will not teach us theorem 3 immediately. They'll give us practical assignment again to be able to make use of theorem 2. I'm telling you something. God has given you theory. And until you make a practical in your life, what he has already taught you, he will not give you the next step. You know, we did physics and we did chemistry. And sometimes we got into the, into the, in the theory class and they'll teach us the theory in physics or in chemistry. And then we'll go into the laboratory after that and we'll have a practical, a, a practical period. And during that practical period, we're making use of what we had just learned in our theory. And if we didn't do that assignment in practical, you know what? God, um, the people will not give us, the teachers will not give us the very next term. Uh, and you know it's the same thing if you're teaching people, if, if people are uh, apprentices in a mechanic washer. That mechanic uh, person that is teaching the fellow will teach him something and then he'll want him to practice on that. If he never practices on what has been taught, that teacher will not teach the next bit of the instruction. You know, it's the same thing in tailoring. Uh, you're teaching a particular person, a man or a woman, you say, well, this is the step to go. But you know, you tell him, but he never practices what you have already told, told him or her. You know, you will not tell, teach the next step if you are a real wise teacher. The same thing with God. When God calls you and he tells you something and he says, now you take a step. You say, well, I'm waiting for the next instruction. The Lord will not tell you the next instruction. Look at verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, arise and go toward the south you know, he didn't tell him the city where I was going, the place where I was going, just toward the south, unto the way that goes down from Jerusalem, unto Gaza, just unto the way, which is the desert. Are there people there for me to talk to? When I get there, what are you going to give me? Are you going to give me a revelation? Are you going to give me an assignment? Just arise and go. Now he arose and he went. And then the Lord could bring the next step. And you know, in your life, Many times people want to become workers in the church, full-time workers. And maybe the Lord has been talking to them and then, uh, you know, they come to the pastor and they say, well, what am I going to do? They want the pastor to table it out. The program of the church for the next 20 years, if Jesus tarries. They want the pastor to say, well, if you start now and you begin at this point, next year you'll be uh, doing this and the other year you'll be doing this and the other year you'll be doing that. God never acts like that. God never acts like that. I won't show you the whole picture to you get started. You know, sometimes uh, people want to be involved in the work of the church, not even as full time. But now a bit of it has been revealed. And they are wondering, well, uh, that's not a perfect situation for me to get into because uh, the work of a zona leader is so limited. Is that all I will be doing? Well, you get started on that first. Well, if I'm going to be in the choir, will I eventually be playing a, an instrument of my choice? You get started. Even if it's a rudiment you have been exposed to, get started. That's the way of God. Well, if I'm going to be a nurse, am I going to be at the car park or in the auditorium or what am I going to do? You just get started. Submit yourself. You know the way the Lord is leading. Now on marriage, people are having a lot of trouble knowing the will of God, especially women, ladies, their sisters, they are born again. But you know what? Oh yes, God, I'm your child. And since I'm your child, 
Tell me the whole story. This person has spoken to me. I want to know your will. Now, if, if this is your will, you tell me what is going to happen when I get to the home of this person. After one year, after two years, after 20 years, are we going to just live for 40 years, 50 years before we die? And there is silence because God is not a talker to you. You know, God doesn't talk like you talk. And when God says, arise and go, you better go. When God says, this is what to do, it's not time to be asking many questions, many questions. Oh Lord, I just want to be very, very sure. And then there is silence because God will not talk anymore. Who do you think God is? Now, Philip heard that. And he arose and he went. That's in verse 27. He arose and he went. I told you about preparation. Proper preparation. God himself was really prepared. And he sent an angel. And now the preacher was prepared. He was submissive. And then he went. And now the Ethiopian eunuch himself. You know what? That Ethiopian eunuch was even himself getting ready. 